What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, I wanna talk about foundations, specifically foundations that are going to make it through the day worn under a mask. I have six formulas that I'm gonna talk about today and initially I was going to rank them, but honestly, I think all of these have merits that can serve different people depending on their preference in texture, in finish, in coverage level. So it's gonna be less of a ranking, which would really just be my personal preference and more of just a collection of foundations that I think are gonna be great for people who need something to really stay well under their mask, as well as if you stay tuned towards the second portion, of the video. I don't know if it's half, I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I do have some extra products that you can use to customize the finish, customize the coverage, and especially enhance the lasting power. So let's go ahead and get started. For this first pick, I'm jumping back to a formula that I fell in love with. Yowza. The formula that I fell in love with last summer was the Lancome Tante Idole Ultra Wear, and my current shade, the best match for me right now, is 330 Bisque Nude. This has a thicker, more lotion-like texture, a soft matte sort of finish, and it's relatively layerable. You're not gonna get anything super sheer out of this unless, unless you mix it with something else out, like pumped straight out of the bottle. It is a medium to layerable to full coverage sort of foundation, and it lasts until you want to take it off, really. It is why it was my go-to foundation last summer and even in months before that because you put it on and you really don't have to worry about it breaking up throughout the day, getting patchy. For reference, in case you're new to the channel, welcome. If not, and you need a reminder, I have combo skin. So I typically struggle with oiliness in my T-zone, but occasionally some dryness around the perimeter of my face. So I not only have to look for foundations that don't develop excess shine throughout my T-zone, but also don't get too dry and cakey and textured around the drier portions of my face. So this, all of these that I'm about to talk about satisfy all of that, but just so you know where I'm coming from, the problems that I typically have with my skin. Oh, and I'm acne prone, so I also don't want anything that's going to emphasize texture like that either. So just for a, a point of reference, all of these foundations work well with skin that struggles with those issues. So that's a really beautiful soft matte formula. And it's also very similar to another pick that I have, but is much more new to me, but is what I'm wearing today. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airb Airbrush Flawless Foundation. And mine is in the shade five neutral. This has a slightly thinner texture than the Lancome, still very much a lotion. And I point this out with both of these because we are gonna get into formulas that are quite a bit thinner. So this is still closer to a lotion. That means that I find it's a little harder to get a lighter coverage from. It's pretty solidly in the medium to full, unless you mix it with something, but solidly in the medium to full coverage. The main difference between the Charlotte and the Lancome is that the Charlotte's a little bit drier. I have noticed recently when I'm wearing this, if I, my skin isn't quite hydrated enough, it will kind of cling to those patches on my cheeks. So I just have to make sure that I've really put a nice layer of uh, moisturizer as a base or a hydrating primer before I go in with this from Charlotte Tilbury. But besides that, these are very similar formulas and very similar lasting powers. Like they will last you relatively transfer proof unless you're doing some intense sweating, which under your mask can definitely happen, but but they're pretty pretty good about being transfer proof. Now let's get into the winner from the drugstore. So the LA Girl Pro Matte HD Longwear Matte Foundation, mine is in the shade Soft Beige. This is another lotion-y type texture, so it's nice and creamy, good for really building up and keeping the skin nice and hydrated. I don't find, even though it has a matte formula, I don't find it being quite as dry as the Charlotte Tilbury. It's just a really nice essential matte formula to get from the drugstore, no less. I really think that matte formula helps it stay a lot longer on the skin without developing excess shine throughout the T-zone, especially in the chin area under your mask. And yet it's not unflattering or uncomfortable around the dry patches around the rest of my face. My next pick is the newest foundation to me. So you've probably heard me talking about here on the channel, but it's all flattering. It is the Range Beauty True Intentions Hydrating Foundation. I have two shades that I've been mixing because initially I ordered a shade that was too deep for me. I overcompensated with the one that's too light. And so together, these make my perfect shade. My shade, the shades are, by the way, Dune and Coconut Milk. And these, this formula is the only one of all of all of those that I'm going to share today that is a slightly satin sort of finish. The rest of these are pretty matte, semi-matte, fully matte. This you put on, and even though it gives you that full coverage, and it has sort of a soft matte 
focus about it, there is something glowy about it that none of these other foundations have. So I guess we'll call this like my glowy pick. If you just absolutely have to have a foundation with some built-in glow, this is gonna be the selection for you. It too has that lotion-y texture, so it's like medium to full coverage. It's a little bit harder, in my opinion, for me to get super light coverage out of this, but because it's a little bit more hydrating, it's certainly more doable, I think, than something like, you know, the Charlotte Tilbury one. So this is your glowy satin pick. Now let's get into those thinner, more layerable formulas. First up is the Umma Beauty Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. This feels like wearing nothing on the skin. It's like I said, very thin. So you can start out with a very light layer and then really build up from there in really thin layers. So it just, no matter how full a coverage you get, and it can go pretty full, you just don't feel like you're wearing a whole lot on your skin and it is very budge proof. I don't know if that's because of the soft matte finish, the nature of the thin formula uh, with both of these that I'm about to talk about, but it's, it's just a super, super dreamy lightweight formula. And the same can be said for my last pick, which is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. This is a little bit more of a matte finish even than the Umma, which is described as soft matte. Pat McGrath takes it one step further in the matte direction, but still gives you that incredibly thin, buildable, durable foundation texture. And so I find with both of these actually, because they're so thin, they really let your natural skin texture stand out and not in a way that as someone who has skin texture that I don't love with my breakouts, not stand out in a bad way. It still flatters your natural skin texture, but keeps your skin looking like skin. That's what I mean to say in all this. You can see your natural skin texture. It doesn't feel like you have a shield of makeup on over top, which I'm not mad at. Sometimes I want the makeup like that some days, but some days you just want to feel a little bit more natural. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what I find these are really, really good for. Now, like I mentioned earlier, most all of these, except for the Range Beauty formulas are matte. And I think that just has to do with how mattes tend to be less transfer proof. In my experience, I love a good glowy foundation. My Believe Beauty, I haven't worn in ages, but it's because it is like a thicker, lotiony, glowy, dewy foundation that just, it's, I don't care what I do to it. I can set it, I can prime, like it, it just transfers. That's all there is to it. And so the other part of this video, what I wanted to do is not only give you a tip for really sealing this all in, but also customizing your finishes. Say you want to, you know, you want transfer proof wear that all of these are gonna give you, but you still want a little bit of a glow. Here's what you need to do. First off, start off with a glowy base. This is actually what I did today in conjunction with my Charlotte Tilbury uh, Air Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I applied the Hollywood Flawless Filter for a superstar youth glow. It's her glowy primer. I applied that all over my face beforehand to give me sort of a built-in lit from within glow. But there are a ton of other things out there from the drugstore like L'Oreal, the Visible Lift Luminous Serum Tint, their True Match Lumi Glotion, any one of these things, apply it as a primer before you put your foundation on. And it's not only gonna help with a lot of these matte formulas, making sure that they don't stick to any of your dry patches like I tend to have a problem with, but it's gonna give you that built-in lit from within glow too. Um, the next thing you you can do is go in and set with a glowy powder. You know I love a good glowy powder, so never forget that's always an option and it'll help set your makeup in addition to giving you that glow. My favorites are from Laura Mercier, the Translucent Loose Setting Powder Glow version in Translucent and the Lancome Absolute Powder. My favorite shade is their Absolute Pace. It gives you a soft golden glow. Um, Flower Beauty also has a really incredible glowing powder as well. The packaging is just super, even bulkier than these if you can believe it. So that's the one reason that I find I, I use that one less is just because the packaging is so big, but it's very comparable to these as well. Now, last up, your absolute secret weapon is only one that I have very recently stumbled upon because it's a new launch. It is Charlotte Tilbury's Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I talked about this in a recent video. It has totally dethroned my Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face Spray in how well it keeps your makeup on. I prime my face with this. I apply my foundation. I set my face with this. Like, foundation, I'll do my bronze or my blush. So it takes that powderiness, any powderiness I might have my face away and it truly locks the makeup in. So it does not transfer, it does not break up. This is a miracle product. And I mentioned this in a, another video where I was raving about this, but I find the scent to be way less overwhelming than the Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face. It's definitely fragrance, don't get me wrong, like it's there, but I know a lot of people really struggled with and just can't, can't do fragrance, which is 
is why the Huda Beauty resting boss face was out of the question for them. So um, I know that's been a criticism of both of these, but between the two, I personally find the Charlotte Tilbury to be way less in your face or in your nose, I guess, as a fragrance might be. So those are all of my mask proof foundations and, and tips for finishing longevity and all that kind of stuff. I really hope it was helpful. If you take any of these recommendations or tips, I really hope they work for you and that they mean a lot less legwork in terms of washing your masks at the end of the day. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If I left any formulas out that you think are absolutely budge proof, let us know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.